Welcome to the Ask a Scientist video series. In this episode, we'll talk about multiplexing for better sequencing efficiency and targeted NGS. First step in multiplexing is to take different samples and label them by attaching a short, sample-specific nucleotide sequence or barcode. Then, barcoded samples are pulled together to enable parallel processing. You can multiplex prior to capture and or sequencing. First option we'll cover is to multiplex your samples prior to hybridization step. We'll call this pre-capture multiplexing. In a typical workflow, genomic DNA from individual samples are made into sequencing libraries with unique barcodes corresponding to the starting sample. Those prepared libraries are then combined equally into one multiplex sample. And the multiplex sample or pool is hybridized to target-specific probes for the designated time up to 16 hours. Afterwards, the probe-bound multiplex sample is captured using the capture beads and then washed. The captured multiplex sample is amplified and cleaned up to yield the final libraries that can be QC'd for quality and quantity. The multiplex sample is now ready for sequencing. We just illustrated pre-capture multiplexing, but another option is post-capture multiplexing. For post-capture multiplexing, you will prepare all your samples individually through all the steps and then pull them prior to sequencing. So how do you choose the best multiplex option? In this three-plex example, if you pre-capture multiplex, then you can expect to use one times the material after library preparation. Compared to post-capture multiplexing, where your samples are kept separated, you'll use three times the materials. For pre-capture multiplexing, this leads to a decrease in both cost and handling errors, but since you're only using a portion of your original library, your genome equivalents are reduced, which can lead to a possible increase in duplicate rate. If you post-capture multiplex, you will likely see a lower duplicate rate and higher depth of coverage, but higher costs and handling errors. You could also choose to do both under certain circumstances, depending on your sequencer's capacity, your genome equivalents, and your preferred metrics. You could pre-capture multiplex two sets of samples and then post-capture multiplex those prior to sequencing. If you want to pre-capture multiplex more, you might need more genome equivalents. When possible, you could start with more DNA into library prep or into the capture, or find a more efficient library preparation method. After reviewing your sequencing metrics, you realize the duplicate rate is high. You can either accept the duplicate rate knowing that for small designs, you still get plenty of coverage. Perhaps you have limited DNA, or you've over-sequenced, or you can increase your starting DNA amount. Be aware of your sequencer's capacity, and remember you don't have to stay in one lane. You could spread your pooled samples across multiple lanes if needed. So what should you remember prior to multiplexing and targeted NGS? Well, the amount of pre-capture multiplexing is determined by the number of genome equivalents and your desired depth of coverage, where the amount of post-capture multiplexing is based on the sequencer being used. Utilizing both of these options will help you be more efficient throughout the entire targeted sequencing process. Thanks for watching Ask a Scientist. If you have questions or ideas for future topics, we would love to hear from you.